Thank you for joining this lesson. Before we continue, remember you can reach out to us through 0704-153-366 for consultation. You can also join our online classes using the same number. We are told that uh, in an experiment using a photo cell, UV light of varying frequency but constant intensity was made to strike a metal surface. The maximum kinetic energy uh -huh, of photoelectrons for each frequency f was measured. Then um, the graph shows how kinetic energy, that is the maximum kinetic energy varies with frequency f. Therefore, we got a graph here. Remember, this is a photoelectric effect whereby a graph has been plotted of kinetic energy in joules against the frequency of the UV light because the frequency is varying. It is to the power of 15, 10 times 15 hertz. We are told uh, given that the kinetic energy is equal to HF minus a certain constant here, determine the values of, determine the values of, one constant h and two constant theta. For us to determine these two constants, there are a few equations we should understand. That is uh, the equation of photo emission. We should say all the energy, all the energy in a given radiation as it approaches the metal surface to cause photo emission. It's usually split into the work function of the metal. Then the other energy becomes what we call kinetic energy. Maximum for this case. It becomes maximum kinetic energy for which the electrons will move at. Therefore, if we rearrange this equation now, this is the, the Einstein's equation of photo emission. Remember, the total energy which is getting split into this is given by H F. So this is equivalent to work function minimum energy plus kinetic energy maximum. So if we rearrange now to begin with kinetic energy maximum, this one will be given by the total energy H F minus the work function minus uh, the work function yes then again there is something we are supposed to know remember we are plotting kinetic energy maximum on the y axis and frequency f on the x axis this is supposed to tell us something and that is from such a graph, whereby kinetic energy is on the y-axis and frequency is on the x-axis, then the coefficient of frequency now becomes our slope. So from such a graph, the slope is going to give us h, constant h. In other words, the Planck's constant. The Planck's constant. The Planck's constant. Again, we are having a, another constant here, which we are yet to know how it will be determined. So we know that for constant h, we will use this slope. But now, constant beta, in this case, is representing the negative work function here. Therefore, we should know that... Uh, According to this equation and to this one, then we should know that uh, the value of data will be the same as the value of the work function. And how do we get work function? Work function is usually obtained by H F naught. H F naught. Again, we ask ourselves another question. How do we get, because this one has already been obtained from slope, what about F naught? 
So F0 is usually equal to the X axis intercept. The X axis intercept in such a graph. The X axis intercept in such a graph. Therefore, the first thing we're going to do here, we can extrapolate our graph. We can extrapolate our graph so that it cuts the X axis at some point. But remember, if the vertical axis had been extended downwards, we could have gotten the work function directly by obtaining the vertical intercept after extrapolating our line. So, work function as alternatives on how it can be obtained. Yes. So that is how the graph is. After extrapolating it, it's passing a little bit just beyond 1. So beyond 1, I'm seeing uh, 5 divisions. Then uh, 5 more divisions. Then we have 5 more divisions. And 5 more divisions before 2. Therefore, we are having very many divisions like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have uh, 4 centimeters to be precise for 1 unit. 4 centimeters for 1 unit. So if we say that uh, for the 4 centimeters we have 5 divisions, so 20 small divisions according to that scale, you can say 20 small squares represent just one unit what about because after one we are just having only one division what about one small square this is going to be one times one out of 20 so it's going to represent one over 20 divisions so one over 20 divisions is equivalent to 0 0.05 yes so this graph is able to read up to two decimal places. That means the value of the value of the ratio of frequency is usually given by 1.05. But remember on that axis there is times 10 to the power of 15 adds. This one should not be forgotten. Everything is times 10 power 15. Therefore, that is the threshold frequency. Threshold frequency. But now we can go to the slope. For us to handle Planck's constant, we need the slope. The slope will be obtained using any two fixed constants. Any two fixed constants. And these two fixed constants can be maybe when we move across the two to there mm -hmm. we can also use a I think we can use two and six yeah two and six So we just need the change in the y-axis out of the change in x-axis. Therefore, from the y-axis, we are moving from 6 to 4. Therefore, the change in y-axis is 6 minus 4. So slope is going to be 6 minus 4. But we should remember there is times 10 to the power of negative 19. For the vertical axis you should remember that times 10 power negative 13 joules but now for the x-axis we are having from two point remember from two we are having a 0 0.5 so that we have 2.1 2.15 so we have from 2.15 according to the scale 2.15 minus all the way from the other unit here is going to be 
you see after one we are having a one two three four five six seven eight so eight multiplied by 0 0.05 divisions we are having 0 0.4 therefore it's 1.4 This one is going to be multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 15. That is what we should remember to hold on to. This is going to be 2 times 10 power negative 19 divided by, when we take 2.15 and we subtract 1.4, I'm getting 0 0.75 multiplied by 10 to the power of 15 multiplied by 10 power 15 so now we can divide 2 divide by 0 0.75 yeah this gives us 2.67 times 10 to the power of negative 34 when we combine negative 19 and negative 15, we get negative 34. Negative 34 joule seconds. Those are the SI units of the Planck's constant. So this is going to be the Planck's constant. Now we get to the last part, whereby we said this value is the equivalence of work function. But now work function has a formula, whereby we use our value from the graph times 1.05 times 10 power 15 so we can multiply this by 1.05 I'm getting 2.8 multiplied by 10 to the power of times 10 to the power of negative 34 plus 15 gives us negative 19 joules of energy. I said this one as an alternative. We can either say work function is given by that formula or according to the equation of a straight line, when we relate this, we can say work function can also be given by the vertical intercept, but the scale here is not allowing us to extract our vertical intercept so we opt to go for the formula whereby we are forced to first of all get threshold frequency which is the equivalence of x intercept on the graph then we get to the formula whereby work function is hf naught this one is from the graph we have calculated slope this one is the x intercept we have extracted it the multiplication gives us what we are calling the work function